Hey guys, so today I have a pretty unusual tutorial for you. As UI designers, we're mostly confined to the 2D space. But then looking at all the 3D images, I always said to myself, wow, I wish I could do those as well. Well, now it is possible and it's quite easy too. This time we're gonna look at a new tool called Spline, which allows you to easily build 3D objects and animate them as well. So this is their website, spline.design. You can download the app for free for Mac OS right now. It's a very early version, so it still has a lot of bugs and a lot of features are missing, but it's enough to actually build something really cool. So let's start with a new file. Okay, and this is the new file. The first object is just a rectangle, a flat rectangle. And you can use the Alt key and then drag the mouse to actually see that it's completely a flat object. And then you can click this icon here to center it again. But we're not gonna need this object, so let's just select it and remove it. And let's change the background color to white. So let's just F, 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 F. Okay, and then pressing enter doesn't work for some reason, so you just need to tab out of there to actually make this uh, color stick. So we're gonna be making a mock-up of the iPhone 12 Pro Max for an easier way to actually put our designs into. So let's just drag an iPhone 12 Pro Max and we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So this is a flat image of the iPhone. It's completely not 3D and that's fine, but we need it for reference for the size of the elements here. So let's start by creating a rectangle and just create a rectangle about the size of the front of the device. And since it's in the exact same spot as our image, it's kind of clashing like as you see here. So let's just click on this little blue arrow here and use shift to drag it outside. And then if we click again, we'll see that our new rectangle is now on top of the iPhone. So what we need to do now is for higher visibility, let's change it to red and let's make sure that it's uh, in the right spot. You can use command and the mouse wheel to zoom in and we can actually select a lower opacity here so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. But once again, you need to tab out of this. So just press tab. So now let's increase the size a little bit. It doesn't have to be super precise for your first 3D model, but it's just as, as precise as it can get. Now we get to the corner radius. So let's just uh, get our corners the right angle. Okay, and we do have a shape that now is like an iPhone. It has the right size, the right proportions. So everything is in the right place. And what's really cool about this, that if we go to 100%, and change it to some other color, like maybe this one for now. Then, as you can see, this is still a flat image, but what you can do is drag this and add some numbers to extrusion, and that way it's not gonna be flat anymore. It's gonna be a 3D object, which is really cool. But to make it more visible, let's choose a physical lightning that's kind of going to make it look more realistic. And now you have an iPhone shape and we're going to play with the colors a little bit later. But for now, let's just move it back to where it was. And let's place the opacity at 50 again. OK, and now the next step is to create the screen. So let's just duplicate this object as with usual UI tools, it just command D and then let's change the color to black. And the idea is for our screen to sit right where it sits here, but like just to make it more visible, let's rotate it again with the Alt key and then just move it a little bit up. And this one doesn't need to be extruded as much, so let's just set it to one. And if it hides under this, then you can just uh, move it out. Okay, let's center it again. So this is our screen and as you can see the screen starts somewhere around here. We're not going to be super precise because it's going to be, it's supposed to be short. But of course, if you put in a lot more time, you can make it a lot more precise. Okay. And what we can do here is actually select those two layers on the layer palette and then center them vertically and horizontally. So the only thing that's missing is that the corner radius should be a tiny bit smaller here on the inner one. Okay. And let's just move it down. So, okay, let's now duplicate the bottom one again. And let's create the notch. So just move it here, drag it, make it about the right shape. 
Okay, and we don't really want the corners to be rounded at the top left and the top right. So we click this icon here and then just type zero here and zero there. Okay, and we have our notch. So now let's just bring this one back up and center the objects. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's extrude the iPhone just a tiny bit more because it's really not that thin. Okay, perfect. So little stuff like that sometimes happens. I can't really help this, but it sh we should be fine after a while. Okay, so this is our general phone shape. So let's create the buttons. There is a button here for the power and we can also create it using a rectangle or we can create it using a cube. So let's do it with a cube. So I created a new shape and it's a cube. It's uh, just like that. So let's move it to the center of our phone. And actually, just to make it easier to work with, let's change this to 100% so the phone is not transparent anymore. Okay, so this is the cube. And of course, we don't really want it to be as thick, but we want it to be about the size of the button here. Okay, perfect. And we want it to be our main color again. And we can round the corners just a tiny bit. And it rounds the corners of every side, which is pretty good because it actually is gonna make it look exactly like the button in the iPhone. Okay, so now let's just drag this inside our shape. And you can use space to pan as well, so just make sure that it's right there. Okay, so we have our button. Okay, so let's just copy this, paste it, and move it to the right spot. Okay, that's about right. But for now, let's keep it outside of the phone. So drag it to the button and we want to modify just one axis of this. So make sure if you, you scale only one of those, probably Y, because it's the longest one. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that's still a little bit too high. So let's modify the Y value to like 25. Okay, that's about right. So now duplicate this, move it down. And we need the volume buttons. So this is going to be like 35 maybe. Okay, now it's going to be more than that. So it's going to be 42. Let's try this. Okay, that looks good. So now duplicate this again and move it down to the right position. And now to make it easier, select all our cubes and then sync them into the phone. And of course, they're not in the right space here as well. So let's just move them to the center. Okay, let's pan this in a little bit. And yeah, it doesn't really, it sometimes moves a little bit more than you'd like it to. So if it was minus 81 and this is minus 73, then it's try minus 77. And of course you need to try this for all of them. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit buggy and it's a little bit does unexpected things, but still to be able to do something like this that quickly is really cool. Okay, so now for the hard part, let's recreate the camera bump. But for that, we need to go the exact opposite way because it's gonna be on the opposite side. So let's just go with back. That works great. Okay, and this is gonna be exactly the same way as we've done before. So create the rectangle. Make sure to make it fit the inside of this sort of embossed bevel thing here. Let's maybe add some smaller opacity. Okay, that's about right. So now let's uh, modify the corners to match this. Okay, and then we use the extrusion just a tiny bit. And then we have the bevel value that we can actually create this whole effect of sticking out. So just make sure that it's roughly in the right spot. And now let's make it our orange. Okay, and this is the camera bump. We're gonna leave it on this side for now. Let's just change the lighting to physical. As you can see, it's gonna look pretty cool. So let's go to the back side again. So I'm just gonna switch over to sketch for a second. And I'm gonna just select this entire camera bump here. And then crop it. And then copy it. And let's go back to spline and paste it. Okay, and here we are. Let's move the image higher. And of course, we need to also move it a little bit to the front. 
don't worry about the alignment of the stuff because since we rotated this 2D image uh, completely 180 degrees, it's also mirrored. So this uh, camera positioning is actually the good one and it's gonna be fine. So what we need to do here is to round the corners just enough. Okay, perfect. And then we can actually restore our beveled um, camera bump and then just use this image to bring it out. And it's really good to name your layers, obviously, but I'm trying to go fast, so I didn't really do it all the time. But of course, let's name this one. So this is the camera bump. And this image here is the cameras. So we can actually group this and call it camera. Okay, and it's starting to look nice. So now let's hide this one. And let's drag our camera to the phone. Okay, it's looking good. Yeah, don't worry about getting it perfect right away because I'm still learning here as well. So we should be fine for now. It's not going to be too perfect, but it's going to be really cool looking in the end. Okay, so now the last step is to find the right colors. So let's go back. So the color of the back side of the iPhone is, let's uh, use the color picker because it doesn't really work that well in Spline. So it's this color. So let's just copy this and go back to Spline. And then let's just paste in the color. And of course, over here in the camera bump, we want to do the exact same thing. And the camera bump is actually really sticking out of the camera here. So we're going to fix it in a second, but let's just add this color to all of our cubes as well. Okay. Now let's just place the camera bump inside the camera. And there we are. Okay. Now it's time for an actual screenshot of something to make it look like a, a real phone. So I have a screenshot of an app that we made a design of recently. Okay, now let's paste in the screenshot, move it to the front of the phone and decrease the size in a way that it's going to be fitting in the phone, but it's going to leave a little bit of a gap on the sides. And then we can round the corners just a little bit so we see the bezels. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now what we need to do is to make this fully opaque and that creates our screen. And then, as you can see, the phone is still far away from the screenshot. So let's just bring it back. But we need to bring it back. It kind of snaps into place, but it's not really in the right place yet. So we just need to bring it just enough so, so it's in the front like this. And then our notch can also have a hundred percent opacity. Okay. And after a few tweaks, it's starting to look good. Well, it may take a while for you to actually make it stick to the front of the phone, but it's well worth it. And just to be super awesome, let's make the lightning port. So let's just click to the bottom here and then let's create a small black rectangle. And the same way you can use all the little notches on the side of the phone and things like that. It should be fine. Okay, so let's go back to the front. And what we can also do is to create some spheres. That's an effect that they're actually using in their tutorial. Okay, and with a few tweaks, we arrive at something like this, which is really cool because you can actually move it and rotate it in complete 3D. But what's even cooler is that you can export this. And then you have a special URL. Okay, and here we are. And then you can actually drag and rotate it in the browser, which is super cool. And you can also export the code for it so you can put it on your portfolio or something. So that's it for today. I'm really excited for this tool because I think it's going to make it a lot easier as it grows. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and see you guys in the next one. Cheers.